Welcome to the oil spill exercise and preparedness training videos. The U.S. Department of Transportation Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration has been working with agencies, oil transporters, and the response community to design these training videos. The goal of these resources is to increase awareness of oil spill response organizations and how they work together. The information found in this program is a result of collaborative efforts and is focused on oil spill exercises and response. During my many years in the Coast Guard and with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, I responded to many incidents and participated in oil spill exercises. I have been honored to watch the community of federal, state, tribal, and industry responders work together to prepare and respond. I have seen the response systems continue to evolve to ensure the appropriate cleanup of spills. Many of these responders are the same ones who collaborated on this project. This two-part series is intended to be a supplemental training resource for the oil spill response community. The goal is to provide a quick reference for team members who are supporting spill response exercises and events. We will learn about the history and authorities governing spill prevention and preparedness and the complexities of responding to an oil spill. Oil spill response is a process that has evolved to address lessons learned and ensure systematic coordination resulting in efficient cleanup operations. The federal requirements to have adequate equipment, trained personnel, and oil spill response plans that are exercised regularly ensures everyone has a chance to practice their roles and responsibilities. Laws governing oil spills in the United States date back to 1851. These authorities have evolved because of lessons learned from historical oil spill events. For example, in 1967, when the SS Torrey Canyon ran aground off the coast of England, spilling more than 37 million gallons of crude oil into the water that eventually washed ashore on the English and French beaches, causing massive environmental and economic damage and concern for public health. In response to the Torrey Canyon incident, the U.S. developed the National Oil and Hazardous Substances Pollution Contingency Plan, commonly known as the National Contingency Plan. The 1968 plan provided the first comprehensive system for oil spill accident reporting, spill containment, and cleanup in U.S. waters and established the National Response System. All of these events lead to the amendments to the Clean Water Act of 1972. However, the grounding and release of oil from the Exxon Valdez in 1989 demonstrated additional federal requirements were necessary and Congress passed the Oil Pollution Act of 1990. Although the Deepwater Horizon event in 2010 did not change the Clean Water Act or the Oil Pollution Act, the incident caused a major revamping in the pollution prevention for offshore drilling and major changes in the requirements to conduct spill exercises. The authorities that govern oil spill response today encompass the planning, prevention, response, enforcement, assessment, and restoration roles for the responsible party and the federal, state, and tribal governments. Over the years, Congress has broadened the scope of the National Contingency Plan. The plan was revised in 1994 to reflect the oil spill provisions of the Oil Pollution Act of 1990. In general, these laws give the federal government enforcement authorities over the responsible parties and have planning and preparedness components. Under the Oil Pollution Act of 1990, the term responsible party refers to the owner or operator of a vessel or facility from which oil is discharged. The regulatory role that the responsible party performs during the oil spill is a major distinction between a Stafford Act response to a natural disaster and an oil spill exercise or event. The oil spill response community operates within a larger preparedness and response system made up of government, public, and private stakeholders. The responsible party or the federal government has the ultimate responsibility for containing, mitigating, and cleaning up the spill. They have access directly 
or through contracting to many resources during the event. The system that brings all the federal, state, tribal, and industry resources together during an oil spill response includes the National Response Framework and the National Incident Management System, which are implemented through the regional contingency plans and the area contingency plans. The response community uses the incident command system to staff and execute a response using the plans to guide the response efforts. An oil spill response can be complicated and evolve over time. The requirements to have oil spill response plans and exercises are critical to ensuring that everyone knows and practices their roles and responsibilities. These exercises do not just happen and careful thought goes into planning the exercise to incorporate recent lessons learned, conducting the exercise to practice skills, and evaluating the exercise to continually enhance response capabilities. The National Preparedness for Response Exercise Program, commonly known as PREP, establishes a workable exercise program for oil spill response that meets the intent of the Oil Pollution Act of 1990. PREP describes a set of exercises led by government and plan holders. The PREP guidelines is a unified federal effort and satisfies the exercise requirements of the United States Coast Guard, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Department of Transportation's Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, and the Department of Interior's Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement. PREP is voluntary, but completion of the exercise program will satisfy the mandated requirements in the Oil Pollution Act of 1990. Although this may scene may look like chaos, it is actually an organized response structure with complex roles and responsibilities designed to work together using the incident command system, which has been the national standard since 2003. The incident command system is a framework that allows responders to quickly bring all the needed resources where they need to be. It is important that all federal, state, local, tribal, and industry responders understand their roles to improve response capabilities, and this is done through planning and exercises. There are many different types of exercises. A tabletop exercise is an opportunity for all responders to talk in one location about their activities in response to a simulated scenario. Tabletop exercises can be used to enhance general awareness, validate plans and procedures, and rehearse concepts. During a tabletop exercise, participants are encouraged to discuss issues in depth and collaboratively solve problems without the complication of larger scale exercises. It is highly encouraged to include all response organizations to optimize the value of understanding roles and responsibilities. An equipment deployment exercise is an exercise during which response equipment is deployed to a specific site. For example, plan holders may practice deploying a boom across a river or other body of water to simulate how oil will be contained. Equipment deployments make sure that response plan tactics are feasible and response equipment is operational and adequately available within mandated timeframes. Equipment deployment exercises can include cold weather scenarios or remote locations to assess response capabilities. An area exercise is an operations-based exercise employed to validate a specific function or capability within a geographic area for which a separate and distinct area contingency plan has been prepared as described in Open 90. Area exercises are commonly used to provide training, validate procedures, or practice and maintain current skills. Government-initiated unannounced exercises, known as GUIs, are compliance monitoring activities that allow regulatory agencies the opportunity to evaluate various aspects of plan holders' preparedness. Due to the unannounced nature of this type of exercise, very little time to prepare is allowed, and often few outside agencies are involved. 
The plan holder must demonstrate their emergency response procedures, the deployment of company-owned equipment, and if used, their contracted oil spill removal organization's capabilities for proper and timely response. Full-scale exercises encompass all or many of these elements. For example, a full-scale exercise will often include a fully operational incident command post with equipment deployment at the event scene. The result of effective planning and exercises should be a well-organized response that looks like this. First, let's highlight who's who during an oil spill response. Federal oil spill response partners provide resources, technical subject matter expertise and oversight for cleanup operations. In general, the Environmental Protection Agency for Inland and the Coast Guard for coastal areas are the pre-designated federal on-scene coordinators who direct, monitor, and coordinate the response to ensure that federal resources are made available. Other federal agencies, such as the Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service play a role in providing technical expertise and assistance. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the Department of Interior also play a role as natural resource trustees. A state representative fills the state on-scene coordinator role. In most cases, other federal, state, and local agencies provide assistance, as well as special teams. Some examples of these teams include the National Strike Force, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Scientific Support Coordinators, and the Navy's Supervisor of Salvage and Diving. Oil spill response plan holders are required to regularly exercise their plans. During an exercise or an oil spill event, they play a critical role in the incident notifications, containment, and cleanup. Oil spill removal organizations are hired by the responsible party to provide equipment and personnel and may fill incident management team roles. All of these federal, state, local, and responsible party counterparts work together under a unified command structure. Organizations blend to create an integrated response team. The unified command structure brings together the incident commanders for all organizations that have jurisdictional authority for the incident and the responsible party to coordinate an effective response. The unified command links responding organizations to the incident and provides a proven structure that ensures effective response. When an oil spill is discovered, the response process is activated. Notifications are made to get immediate assets deployed to stop and contain the spill. As the response continues, responders' common goal is clean up operations to protect the safety of people and the environment. The responsible party takes action to prevent any further release into the environment and stops the spread of the spill. Resources cascade to the incident as required. Under the unified command structure, the federal on-scene coordinator, other on-scene coordinators, and the responsible party incident commander oversee all response operations, including environmental cleanup. In addition to ongoing response operations, agencies with regulatory authority provide oversight to the investigation and to the repair and restart process. For example, the Department of Transportation's Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration will gather all necessary data in order to determine the underlying cause of the incidents it regulates. Response resources from the responsible party, as well as state and federal governments, are all focused on utilizing the plans and goals established to clean up and restore the environment. Every response is different and requires various types of resources. The framework established by the Incident Command System provides the flexibility to expand or contract resources as the need of the response change. The importance of community engagement prior to an event cannot be overstated. One of the key elements 
of preparing for a spill response is practicing how the responders will communicate event information to the public. This process starts with the development of a crisis communication plan. Community engagement and sharing of information about the situation as it unfolds is critical. Unified and early messaging during an event can help inform the public on the current situation, status of cleanup activities, and plans for the near future, all of which will help control rumors and misinformation. Federal, state, and local responders all work together to ensure consistent messaging on progress and impacts. It is imperative that the spill response community be transparent and truthful with the public. Websites and social media have become a primary way the public receives information. Social media has become a method to have a two-way conversation and learn about community questions or concerns. The goal of communication during a crisis is to be transparent and build trust by sharing accurate information to inform the public that everyone is working diligently to minimize the impact and clean up the spill. The federal requirements to have oil spill response plans and exercises are critical to ensuring that everyone knows the expectations and has a chance to practice their roles and responsibilities. The relationship between government, tribes, industry, and the understanding of their responsibilities has created a trained and prepared response community.